Cause I, so I've also been doing this a lot where I'm like, I talk to amazing people through world changing kids all the time. And I feel selfish that like this information isn't out there for other people to see. So I've started right. recording it and putting clips. So what, and then it's authentic, right? It's not like, it's like, you are really telling me for the first time about this cool organization. And it's, there's like magic to that. So mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So you go now, yeah. tell me, tell me all about I it. I will launch, launch back into it. Yes. Um, so we decided that, that, yeah, working together was the best idea. So we're not competing for resources or competing for attention or, or going to the same place or whatever. So we formed a bigger organization. Um, we are three basic parts that have formed this whole thing. There's the humanitarian side, which is like international missions and working in refugee camps, hospitals, even like whatever we do, we can do, but it's more international like crisis situation. And then there's the therapeutical clowning, which is kind of the uh, domestic stuff that we would do in hospitals. So like and old folks homes, um, permanent like long term care facilities, wherever is like here that, that, that could use a smile. Um, and then there's also the social circus aspect, uh, which is the third like tier, which is us teaching circus. Uh, and that's mostly domestic for now, for now it's, and it's been, it's been up and down, obviously, like we've had a course running, um, a couple courses in a couple of different places in Montreal and Trois-Rivières, um, for the course of the pandemic, but it's like stop and start as like everything else is, which, you know, we're dealing with. Yeah. So, okay. So what, what can I do for you? Yeah. Okay. So the, the very small request is, so I'm writing this camp. It's going to be okay. Monday to Friday, nine okay. to 1130. Okay. I only am asking for like a half hour of your time within that 45 minutes of your time. Maybe, uh, I'm running the camp with three, fr two other friends. So we do one third of it is yoga mindfulness. And then she also does mindful. My friend, Heather, who does that does mindful snack making. So she creates fun <laughs> snacks with the kids. And then my friend Nancy does art for like one third of it. And then I do my world changing kids stuff. So we have the theme, the art will be tied into the theme. Um, the goal is to kind of, you know, learn about refugees, the situation. I'm, so I'm also hoping to have someone who, who has lived experience being a refugee. Um, and then we want to come up with an action we can take over the week to help make things better. That's also always the goal. So like how we did, we made the puppets for you. You know, the kids had something they could do that they have a memory of doing and they felt powerful. It's harder when you're online because, you know, you can't really do things like making a puppet with all the supplies together. Uh, so that's also why we interview people because then I videotape it and then I put clips up. I'm so far behind though because I have hours and hours of footage, but I try to put little clips up every now and then. Um, so at least the kids can see like that they interviewed this person and they're on, you know, TV while well, they're on like YouTube, uh, helping. They're on a screen. Them. Yeah, you're on a screen. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they watch YouTube. They don't watch TV anymore. So it's fine. You're on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at least they get to see that, like, they're helping to raise awareness about this issue, you know? So if you just kind of talk about like why you do what you do and the importance and it's very informal. So what I've fallen into, cause this all happened led by the kids. Um, I had started this Upstanders Academy. I guess I should start with that. So the Family Social Justice Family Social Justice Workshop, whatever I was calling it, that you came to. Yeah. I did a couple of those and, and you know, was always trying to find like where exactly, it, what is the right format for what I'm trying to do, right? So just before the pandemic, I'd started an Upstanders Academy. I rented the church up the street. It was going to be an eight-week session. I had 13 kids signed up. They walked right down the street from school to the church, which is like up the street from my house. It was all very easy. Um, and we were just going to talk about anything they wanted to, and they were going to pick a community connected passion project to work on over the eight weeks. And I was going to help them like bring in experts. If it was like, teach them to do a petition, if that's what they wanted to do, we could do a podcast. They could make something, whatever they wanted to do. And the first session, my city councilor had heard about this because I put it in my newsletter and he reads my newsletter and he said, he loves this idea. He'd like to come and observe. And I was like, you're the city councilor, like come talk to the kids. That's amazing. Like I haven't, I really had no plan. I was just like wide open, unscripted, which is now what I think my like strength is. Um, 
And so Jean Cloutier is his name. So he came and his wife came because she likes me too. So they both came. We set like all the kids and all of us up in a circle. And I said to Jean, like, I have no idea how this is going to go. The kids might, you know, do you want to plan for like 10 minutes of explaining like, what's a city councilor? What do you do? You know, and then see if there's questions. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. So all of these kids know me, like they've known me pretty much the whole like school, you know, they know my kids, they're from the neighborhood, I'm friends with their parents. So they're really comfortable with me. And this conversation went on for an hour. Like I had to stop them because I was like, we got to wrap up. Your parents are coming to pick you up, you know, or you have to walk home or whatever. Uh, so it, the kids just, it was wide open, like I said. So they talked about uh, veganism versus vegetarianism versus hundred mile diet versus, you know, factory farming, organic farming. They talked about renewable energy and nuclear energy. They talked about uh, one of the girls asked about International Women's Day and why do we have one? And then I love it because another girl jumped in to answer before Jean could. Like it was just, and these kids, they were raising their hands, like and getting mad if I wasn't answering them in order. So I got the flip chart out and I would like write down, you know, okay, your hand went up and then we'd start at the top and we'd cross off their names, right? When they, when they got their questions, they're getting mad at me. And uh, like Jean was blown away too. We were like, this is, this is something. So, I mean, what I've discovered is that, so these kids are ages eight to 13. Uh, the ones in the camp will be a bit younger. We do like seven to 11 for the camp, um, but same thing. Uh, and what I discovered was these kids don't have a platform, a space to have this kind of conversation, right? Like wide open, like any question is not, like fair, you know, um, cause at school, as much as the teachers are awesome and try, you know, their best, a lot of times there's no time for it, right? Like there's the curriculum and, and the kids can't really take it off, you know, down a rabbit hole of their interest where I'm like, let's go. Right. Like that's what where... you need. Oh my God. It's the best way to learn. Exactly. That's like genuine. You really care about this. You want to learn more. Right. So, and I mean, I guess a little bit of school that and my kids are doing these genius hour projects, which that allows for it. Cause they can, my daughter did one on Alcatraz. She went down this like insane, she can tell you everything about Alcatraz and Frank Morris's escape. And yeah, that was her genius hour project. Wow. Or it was, I guess it was called a very important, very important person project, which your teacher was like, oh, escaped convicts are an interesting choice for your very, in you know, very important <laughs> person. Yeah, but it was, she loved that. So yeah, that's like, I see that when they get to like, when they really like something, they'll go all in, right? Um, yeah, so we got two weeks, oh, and then, oh, two of the boys though, had, this was at the very beginning of the pandemic and people were starting to wear masks, not everyone, but the throwaway right. masks. And two of the boys were very concerned about the waste that this would create, you know, and that they're not recyclable, they're not biodegradable. They could see where this was going, right? Like, this is gonna be terrible. So they came the next week with cheesecloth and string, and they were gonna make their own biodegradable masks that, you know, and they like, they, oh, I had a friend join us who brought her sewing. I, well, I brought my sewing machine, but I don't know how to use it. So she's the seamstress. So she, I said, her, her and her son come for free, join the session if she'll be my seamstress. So she was helping okay. the kids, you know, like measure and cut and stitch things up. Oh, and the kids were also, some of them were working on um, fabric wrapping paper, you know, like in the Japanese style. So we don't oh, buy cool. wrapping paper and throw it out because that is insanity too. Um, Have you tried wax paper for, for your like food and stuff too? Um, I don't, I have the, be like the beeswax, the reusable stuff I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I love that. Yeah, that's what I meant. Beeswax paper, okay. like the reusable. Yes. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, uh, like, wax paper you buy in a box. That's okay. That's what I thought. I was like, I don't have that now. Although that is biodegradable, depending on the material used for the wax part, I think. But yeah, yeah. But that's a lot of. But it's nice to have a reusable. Yes. Rather than buy, like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have the beeswax stuff. Yeah. So the wrapping paper for Christmas. Yeah. So kids were working on that. They were sewing things. It was amazing. And then we got sent home because we only got two weeks in, and then the pandemic, and we all got sent home. So I kind of emailed the parents and said you've paid for like six more weeks. You want to try it online? And everyone said yes. And then the kids like exceeded my expectations. They joined, they were still engaged. And then we could still watch videos. We could still talk about things, right? Uh, we did come up with ideas for Earth Day. They did, uh, they made a video with 10 actions. Each child, there were 10 kids, each one picked an action you can take to help save the planet. And they, they made these clips. And then one of the kids who loves video editing, put them all together. It was amazing. Um, anyways, and then I just went from there and it's, We've interviewed uh, Georgia from Wyatt and Jack, who's over in the UK, who takes old inflatable pool toys uh, that would otherwise end up in the landfill and turns them into bags and accessories. 
and we interviewed Gaver Tully in San Francisco, who's disrupting the education system and, you know, has the tinkering school and this bright work school. And I thought, why not give the kids the tools to disrupt their own education? Um, and then we interviewed Linz, who does queer kids stuff, a YouTube channel, and they came on and just talked about L all things LGBTQ+. Plus. Uh, we like it's insane. Ralston King, our city councilor, came on to talk anti-racism because he's spearheading the anti-racism secretary in Ottawa. Um, Thielen Kignosway, who's a First Nations uh, and Indigenous youth leader, amazing hoop dancer. He now has like 500,000 followers on TikTok or something like that. But I've known him since he was, I've known him for like three or four years. He's an amazing leader. The first time I heard him talk, I was like, you have that gift. Like you were like 11 and you were amazing or however old he was. Uh, Cody Coyote, another Indigenous uh, hip hop. Do you know Cody? I know that guy. Okay. So the kids wrote a hip hop song with him. And Sick. It. yeah. So cool. just, this is it. It's just like, let's just do it. Let's do the next thing, right? Oh, a group of kids we presented, well, it was a nine week, pro like I led a nine week program. We learned all about environmental activism, which really seems to be the kids' most important topic. This is what they want. They always kind of go back to environmental activism. And then we presented at a university symposium uh, on, on environmental activism. So these kids between the ages of eight and 13 presented during the pandemic virtually to like academics and, and, you know, eco warriors and scientists and whatever. And the kids presented their ideas. It was amazing. Yeah. So it's been really, uh, I've, I've hit, I've hit my stride or whatever the term is like, and every kid needs this. So thing that I'm really like potentially, you mentioned you might want to have someone on that has like lived experience yeah um and i think that that would be like the most the most best um yeah. i have a few friends who i have in mind who would like be potentially great okay great to talk if they're if they're willing yeah um and so i would like ask um that'd be great i can ask i can ask them um cool okay um i will i will reach out to someone okay specific that i have in mind who is like a wonderful just the most wonderful human okay um like gentle kind great english okay. is in is in greece right now so it would be oh. on a potentially different timeline i don't know but i'll, I'll ask him i'll ask him right just right well that's like carving um, proteins we had to work on 13 hours ahead yeah yeah so yeah okay okay so this person is living like as a refugee in the refugee camp or yes oh wow outside of it um okay. in so the there's a the the town of Samos okay. has apartments that are for rent. And like, if you're doing, if you have a job or like you have money from home, then some people are staying in apartments. Okay. Um, most of the time they're like sharing, you know, a few bedrooms, but it's still better than way better than living in a camp. Right. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's got an apartment still. I don't see why he wouldn't. Okay. But he's, he's, he's got his Greek, it's not a citizen, but it's like he's got Greek permanent residence now. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so he can stay Syria? there. So he can get a job. Um, and I'm sure, like he's he's such a genuinely like wonderful human. I think you would love to to talk to kids and 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 to be like this is because that's in my opinion way more valuable than hearing me talk. <laughs> well, I want you to talk though about everything you said abundantly human all those good things and yeah i'll say all this i'll say all the fun words yeah and i, I can it. talk and i can I, I can definitely talk as well but i think i think as like an addition or as like a yeah so you two would come on together oh my god that'd be amazing that that would be pretty cool if if that's possible if he has i know okay. he's got a, i mean we we message every now and then so i know he's got access to technology okay um, 